Welcome to 602 Row Show, covering Clayton's very exciting season of The Bachelor. Uh, this is going to be week six review, week seven picks. Uh, we are moving right along. Uh, the season sometimes feels like it's dragging on forever, and other times feels like it's moving very quickly. It feels so chaotic. I hated this episode. <laughs> There's a lot going on from an editing standpoint. There's a lot going on from a cast standpoint. Um, I guess kind of just a fast recap the top of the episode, uh, as you've been doing. Uh, yeah. why, don't you, why don't you give us a breakdown of, of to what the hell actually happened in this one? Yeah, I mean, there was a ton of content. Um, jumped around a lot. So we started off with a two-on-one with Genevieve and Chanae. Then went right into Rose Ceremony 5, where we actually got a cocktail party for the first time in a long time. Um, and then we went to Croatia. Teddy had a brief one-on-one. And then we had a group date where the girls got to be Viking Viking warriors, warriors, champions. Cro- Croatian? Um, Croatian warriors? Croatian. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um. And then we had half of a one-on-one with Sarah. Um, And we also had like a mini date with Susie. Um, And yeah, that was the episode. Yeah, it's just a lot. It's just a lot going on. Yeah. Um, I'm a little concerned still because we didn't get through another rose ceremony. Which I, I understand from a TV production standpoint, but it absolutely drives me crazy from a viewing and fantasy standpoint. But, like, the way that they chose to handle the the mess that they have put themselves in as far as being, like, so far off, the way that they chose to handle it in this episode, I've never seen done before, and I hated it. <laughs> like, That's to snatch that fair. much content into, like, one episode... Again, like, they cut Sarah's date in half, right? Like, we only saw the dinner portion of it. And even that, we didn't see the whole thing of. Um, it was just, it was messy. It was so messy. Well, we'll uh, we'll dig into some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but first, we will recap the actual fantasy impact of all the nonsense that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with our week six picks. And I don't even... I don't believe these are the picks that you stuck with. No, because I took Sarah out because, again, I didn't think we had time for Sarah's date. Yeah, I'm going to just go through our picks to the scoring because I think I might have changed mine, too. You did. Yeah, I did. Okay, so here is what we actually rolled with. Um, Sarah, Teddy, Genevieve, Shanae, Mara for me. Susie, Teddy, Genevieve, Shanae, and Mara for you. Mm-hmm. Um, this was a, a tough week for a lot of reasons. Uh, a lot of which had to do with the edit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ended up making a, a late change to Marinera. Um, trying to steal some of the points that looked like they were going to try to give us a bit of a villain edit. Uh, and it really didn't come through for me. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit and like what happened to all those points when we get to the breakdown. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Perfect lineup would have had uh, Susie in it. Um, and then any combination of the girls at 20, uh, which I believe is Genevieve, Shanae, Rachel. I think so. Um, but you had to have Susie to hit top score for this week. 138. Uh, I came in at 128. You came in at 104. Yeah. And you had to have Sarah, turns out. Because she, she came in with like 42 points. Like yeah, had- 48. She uh, yeah. she laid them on. Yeah, so um, I lost big time with that change, that late time change, but... Yeah, we we had discussed maybe that date not happening at all. Um, 
And uh, as you alluded to, and I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more when we get to Sarah, but it kind of didn't. Um, and they managed to cram in a shit ton of points uh, into her one-on-one. Um, and so, yeah, 48 yeah, points out of Sarah is like, huge. I don't, like, I don't even want to call it, like, a one-on-one. Like, it was truly just, like, the next drama at right? Like, it's the next drama story is what they fit in. They built Not it up drama. real big, it was, too. It was nothing about trying to date The Bachelor. Which is, like, very consistent with the season, right? Like, none of this has been about Clayton. None That's of fair. Uh, we both talked about putting Shanae in uh, to grab those points. Didn't really hurt you if you had her. Um, yeah. I would have liked to have seen just a little bit more instead of them just kind of abandoning her. Um, if she had one more big blow up, she would have been uh, a must start. But uh, yeah. 20, 20 points I'm happy with. She she fit the lineup. A um, little bit of a risky pick with uh, with her only having X footage, but it, it worked out. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for a little bit of a deeper dive on that, you can listen to our last episode, which uh, which definitely covered a lot of that. Uh, moving on to Rose Show overall, uh, Cloud Wine starting to pull away here. Yeah. Uh, 1,068 points. Uh, Megan, 43 up on you, 44 up on me. I was so close, and then I had such a bad week. <laughs> so uh, you and I within one point of each other, uh, and you'll see the overall Bachelor Nation standings there. I moved up a little bit. You slid back uh, mm-hmm. 19th and 17th uh, as we sit right now. So you know, still in striking distance, um, but we're getting to chalk season here. So we'll... Uh, kind talk. of. I mean, it's going to be a messy ending. We'll see. Yeah. It, yeah, there's a lot still going on. I I know I I stole a, a sneak peek at our at our picks for this week, but we'll get to that coming up here. Did you have anything else on uh, week to week? No. Uh, jumping the season long. Um, <laughs> season long is a disaster too. Uh, I'm at twenty five twenty eight. You're at twenty four twenty eight. Uh, and Ashley's at twenty seven forty eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is just about over, um, calling out the, the split scores here. Uh, Serene put up 120 for me this week. Teddy gave you a hundred. Uh, so, you know, it's still what we're looking for there trending along, but those Shanae points in the, uh, after the final rows or the women to all rather is going to be, uh, yeah. I, I think this is pretty well sealed. But uh, as I said, I think on our last show, we'll we'll do a deeper dive on season long picks and strat. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one, I think, is is just about wrapped up. Yeah. All right. Uh, unless you have anything else off the top, fantasy wise, I think it's time for big three things. Okay, let's start with you this time. What was your favorite thing about the episode? My favorite thing about the episode is just the way all these girls treated Shanae when she was gone. Yeah. Um for like literally days. Like they got on a plane and flew to Croatia and they were still bagging on this girl. Yeah. Um so what made it my favorite is just the the overall impact that this <laughs> character had on all these other girls. Um I've said a couple times she might be my favorite. Cassidy early. But uh, yeah. Shan- Shanae came on hot. Yeah. And uh, just the ripple effect that she's had on everyone uh, is amazing. And I cannot wait to see her on Paradise. There is um, a petition going around the internet to ban Shanae from Paradise. Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. Because they'll all watch. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite? Um, so my favorite was um, just Gabby and Susie. Um, they're very quickly becoming like my two favorites. I just like really enjoy them as the characters that we're seeing. Um, I think my favorite, one of my favorite moments in the episode was Gabby double fisting champagne bottles in celebration of Shanae leaving. 
Um, and then I also just like really love Susie taking the initiative to like pull Clayton and do like a mini date with him. Um, whether or not she initiated that is like another story, but I thought it was cute and like I liked it. So, um, so yeah, I enjoyed them. Uh, my was- least my least favorite was the two on one. It was pretty boring. Very anticlimactic. Yeah, it. They kept. They're in a giant park where they are just awkwardly placing like patio furniture. Yeah. And they keep putting Clayton directly into the sun, so that he is like this the entire time he's on camera. And why you look like. It's not like these are park benches and you're stuck kind of where they are, bolted to the ground. Like, they're literally just putting benches somewhere. Yeah, but they literally give zero fucks about him. Well, I don't think it's a Clayton-specific thing. Um, uh, Thinking back to uh, Katie's season (laughs) and just... Or uh, uh, Tasha's season with Sneaker (laughs) Zach when they had to do their hometown dates and they gave him, like, a cardboard cutout of a taxi cam. (laughs) Some of the stuff they do... Low budget. What was your your least favorite part? So I started off saying that my least favorite was the two-on-one because they had built up like the entire season, right, to this two-on-one saying like, oh, like it's back, right? It's the first time in like so many seasons that we've seen this two-on-one, like how exciting. Um, And then it was literally 13 minutes and was so anticlimactic. I truly believe that Clayton was going to choose Shanae to stay and I really wanted it to happen and then when he didn't I was like heartbroken um but then very quickly the entire episode just became my least favorite because of just the fuckery that the producers and editors decided to do with this so well the, I guess my surprise mm-hmm. as a little bit of a counter to the fuckery is the edits that Rachel and Susie are getting I <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. The edit that Rachel is getting and the way they like whisper at each other and shit is, well, it's disgusting first off, but it's so unique in the way they're portraying their time together. So spoilers, right? We coming in had a source that said Susie had won. The footage we're getting does not look like that's the case. No, it looks like Rachel's already won. How? Well, I guess we could talk about this briefly right now. I don't think so. That's not what I see when I watch the the previews and just kind of what we know falls out. This has unmitigated disaster and then Susie coming back afterwards written all over it for me. And I'm so ready. I'm so ready for all of this. I am just so confused by Rachel. And like, I think that's part of why, like, I just like her so much is that like, she, she keeps putting up points, right? Like she keeps putting up these big, big amounts of points, but I never want to put her in my lineup because we never actually get footage of her. Like, in commercials, we never, like, promos, we never actually see her because she is literally on screen for such a short amount of time. But she's magically getting these group date roses that, again, come out of nowhere as far as viewers are concerned. She's won the last, what, four group dates? Like, insane. For, like, no reason. It's been the last, like, three or four. It might might just be three. But, like, again, just out of nowhere, Rachel's win. Right, um, which is going to be automatic points, but like I still have no idea like what their connection is, like what's going on, what she's doing to get these group roses. Like it, it feels very unsafe to like put her in my lineup from like a fantasy standpoint because I'm like I don't understand the story at all. But at the same time, she keeps putting up points, and so like part of me wants to throw her in. She's, but yeah, anyway, I don't like it. She's tied for fourth. With Sarah with 24.7 points an episode. Yeah. 19, 1, 17, 67, 24, 20. So outside of that, of episode two, 
which is where this all started, where there wasn't even rose ceremonies and shit. Um, but, she's been pretty damn consistent. And again, she's, I mean, she's getting that number of points, so like 19, 18, whatever points, in like five minutes of footage. Like, she's only on screen for between five and ten minutes. Like, she's getting very little screen time. And then again, these points just kind of come out of nowhere, and I fucking hate it. Jesus, I'm, I'm looking at this because I pulled it up, and now yeah. Shanae finished at 44.3 points an episode. <laughs> Yeah, she is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was your surprise? Uh, it was the it was the the Rachel Susie edit. Uh, just yeah. kind of how they're portraying those two. I it just Gabby seems like an afterthought to me at this point. Yeah, Gabby's like the 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 comic relief. Um. Yeah, she's kind of weird. <laughs> I I enjoy her. I have be friends with her. Um, okay. My surprise is that we're already at hometowns, which is also how I felt about Michelle season two. But um, yeah, I mean, the, we still got an episode. We have we have one episode, but then it's hometowns, and so like, like that's my surprise is that like all of this <laughs> we're going down to four people next week. Yeah. Theoretically, if they get their shit together. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a whole different issue. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like that's my surprise. Which, again, and, it, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, but yeah, sometimes it feels like it's moving really fast. Sometimes it feels like it's moving really slow. Again, I haven't felt like I've been watching The Bachelor. I truly have believed that I've just been watching the Shanae show. Um, and so, yeah, this idea of having hometown dates is like, oh, yeah, we are on a dating show, huh? Weird. We'll see how it all plays out. There hasn't been a lot of intriguing footage from hometown stuff. No. Um, Clayton, I didn't really have any specific notes on this week. He did have a white wine after dark, and I have updated my master list. Um, so I've he had... did... What was that? Teddy had a white wine after dark as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the list is long. I, I mean, I could do it right now for Clayton's part since I don't have any notes on Clayton. Uh, from what I have been sober enough to see while watching and decode for my notes, Sierra, Lindsay, Gabby, Rachel, Clayton, Sarah, Teddy, Mara. Most of them with multiple offenses. Mm-hmm. So, don't drink white wine after dark. Just don't do it. Yeah. You have anything on Clayton? Um, his outfits were awful. You know, I didn't notice the this week. The, 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 the nighttime ones continue to be just so atrocious. They continue to put him in like the like crew neck like sweaters with a blazer or like um, dinner jacket over it. Just doesn't look good. It's the style. I don't. I don't. I'm wearing a pink a pink hoodie like. That I designed. I don't. I don't know. Uh, okay, so eliminations. Yeah. Um, Shanae Hunter Marlena. Mm-hmm. Let's uh, let's start with Hunter and Marlena. Yeah. Hunter. I have nothing. <laughs> so Hunter, I have that before she left the show in this last episode. She definitely labeled herself as an underdog, which I thought was just so ironic considering she is on the underdog season. <laughs> but she literally said, like, if I, I think it was something along the lines of, like, if I stay, like, it's going to mean so much. So I've truly felt like an underdog within this competition. She was in, the, she was in the, the credits scene at the end, and we got, like, more Hunter flavor than I feel like I'd gotten the whole season. Yeah. Um... It was weird. She it was it was just kind of weird that they put that in there when they decided that she wasn't worth having any screen time for seven episodes. Yeah, I mean, I would have liked to instead see what Sarah and Clayton did during their daytime portion of their one on one. That would have been cool. Uh, I'm sorry, I did have a Marlena note, and it was that her and Hunter matched. Um, I saw somewhere on the internet where they're telling people that people wearing green dresses also keep going home, so don't wear a green dress. Well, um, th- there's a non-zero chance that it's the same green dress. 
Now, if Hunter liked it and I'm one of the girls that went home, she might have taken it. I don't think Marlena's build would fit any of the other girls, but Hunter would. I think dresses are a lot different than, like, sh- like men's shirts. Like, the men can trade like that. The girls, it's, it's a lot harder to do that. <laughs> Unless one of them's a seamstress. Yeah. I we got a lot of time sitting in that house. Like, there's a big difference between, like, a size 6 dress and a size 8 dress. <laughs> yeah, two big. sizes. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I have for Marlena is, I just, like, I really appreciate her attitude after she got, like, eliminated. I was just like, yeah, I'm going to find love when I'm meant to. Like, whatever. I was like, yeah, you are. Yeah. She would be a, a really interesting bachelorette. Um. I don't think they do another Black Bachelorette for the next round here, uh, but she'd be a really interesting one because we saw that confidence and we also saw the insecurities kind of crop. Um, so I just think that would be a really interesting character, but I don't think it happens. Yeah. Uh, Shanae, who I took the liberty of making a separate slide for. It's the shrimp dragon, Mm -hmm. uh, which I sent to you before the show so that you'd know what I was talking about. (laughs) Um, Check the description of the video for this artist's credit. Shanae's face over the top of what this artist has made is all me. (laughs) Uh, Really roughly struck together, but uh, Shanae, just that impact that she had. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> she inspired so much hatred. And so much confusion <laughs> from the end. <sighs> uh, I didn't like that she picked up the rose on the two on one. I wasn't surprised that she did, but that's bad juju. You don't touch the rose. Okay. It's a bad idea. Mm-hmm. Um, I also really appreciate how shocked she was that she was sent home. Yes. I feel like that was actually genuine. And and that's concerning for a lot of reasons. No, I was genuinely surprised that she got sent home. Again, from like, from what I saw on the two on one, it was very much leading her away. (laughs) It was accusing Genevieve of being an actress. Like he was totally like bought into Sinead's story. 100%. I like I I truly believe that like when he got up and left um to like take some breaths and like make his decision that like a producer came up to him and was like, dude, we've been stringing you along, like you have to choose like Shanae has to go home. Because like everything was pointing to her saying. Like he was bought into it. Yeah. I I... It. She she definitely made an impact. Um I don't think I've ever seen a season get railroaded like this before. She so um, Bachelor Data came out with like a new image right before we, we shot this, um, and she had across the season had double the amount of screen time as the next closest person, <laughs> which was Sarah. So Shanae over like the season, so over the six weeks, has been on screen for almost forty five minutes. And Sarah's the next closest at 22 minutes. Like, fucking ridiculous. I, I would have loved Bachelor data, if you're listening, to also throw in the amount of minutes that Clayton's been on screen, just, like, for a comparison, because I bet Sinead is real close to even Clayton's number. She has to be on yeah. Paradise if they run Paradise again. Well, like, the problem is, like, I don't know... I mean, kind of like with Victoria, when Victoria was on um, Paradise this summer, like, I don't know who would want to go for her, right? Like, I don't know who would want to be first. She's gorgeous, and guys like crazy girls. But, like, I don't know if they like that type of crazy. It's it's all these Bachelor idiots. I mean, true, I mean, the other girls that go on Paradise are almost as crazy. That one girl who cried, uh, Ashley I. Yeah. She's married with a kid. Like, she's insane. But, like, being emotional versus being manipulative are two very different things. 
They are. And I think Ashley I and Shanae are pretty much the same person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have anything um, else on uh, a whole lot of data to our listeners about your dating history? Oh, <laughs> right. uh, you have anything else on the e limbs? <laughs> no. All right, uh, Eliza. Got nothing. Yeah, she had a quiet episode. <laughs> Let's move right on to Gabby. I mean, she had like that one episode, and that's it. Yeah. Um, Gabby again, just crack my shit up. Um, she read one of the cards. Um, otherwise, I don't have a ton on her. She's a meme now. I mean, you referenced it earlier. She's uh, all over the internet, double fist and champagne bottles. I mean, like, she's several memes, if I'm being honest. <laughs> she's like the, the working class woman's uh, Cinderella. <laughs> well, okay, and I feel like, but like, so. Obviously, there was, um, towards the beginning of the season, like, there's all, which happens, I think, like, every um, Bachelor season, um, there was an article put out about how The Bachelor never brings on, like, plus-size people or people over size six, right? But, like, it's a very specific look that are The Bachelor contestants, um, where it's these, like, skinny women who, um, you know, like, are really beautiful, like, are super beautiful and like know how to take pictures and know how to be on screen and like always look immaculate. Um, and so there is, I mean, there's just something so genuine and refreshing about Gabby who honestly makes some of the ugliest faces I've ever, I've ever seen. Um, and just like, it truly does feel like a real person um, versus like these girls who still look, look and feel like Instagram models, even though they're on this like reality television show. Um, and so like, I, like, that's why I think I'm like very like drawn to Gabby is that I can, she's just like, she is, she's making fucking ugly faces on TV. She's trying to be sexy and like is laughing about it. Like it just feels so relatable and like normal. I hadn't noticed until these last few episodes I watched with Ashley, Gabby's hair is it's so bad. It's always a disaster. Like, yeah. Ashley had to like point it out because like I'm looking at her face and like framing like, her face it's like okay but then the whole back is like bumps and waves and yeah it's well like, and at one like, point she like teased it really badly again like it's just like it's so relatable um where and like her like again like drinking the champagne right it's like she's like not afraid to just be like dumb and stupid but like also again just like not perfect all the time and, like, again, like, a lot of these girls, like, they talk about not wanting to be perfect, right? Not wanting to be, like, needing to be perfect. But, like, they still look perfect <laughs> while they're saying that. Versus Gabby's, like, I don't want to be perfect. And she has, like, three chins. And you're, like, oh, yeah, girl. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and it's, it's great. I, I don't know. Uh, Genevieve, who might be the most horrible toaster of all time. The toast she gave at the beginning of the two-on-one was not only weak on content, but it also ran long. Um, and it was just her and Crazy Pants and Clayton. Like, she didn't have to even make a toast. And she's like, here's to finding out the truth, no matter what the truth might be, and being in this beautiful... It's like, Genevieve, shut up. I... Cannot believe that she accepted the rose after all of Clayton's accusations and the way that she was treated on the date. I was floored that this girl wanted to stay on the show, especially because she didn't like as she's accepting the rose, didn't even seem excited about it. Like seemed so disinterested. It looked like it was a decision. Like it looked like she made the choice. It wasn't just like a natural thing. One hundred percent. And I would have loved it and supported her decision if she would have not taken that risk. Um, because, yeah, it was a, a dick to her on that, from what we saw. Fair. I have no rebuttal. I think your video sync is off, and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> Perfect. Drop it in the comments if Megan's... Uh, Speaking doesn't match her her lips. And then just close your eyes. And to her. 
we usually try to fix everything, but you know, sometimes. <laughs> um, Genevieve gave us the shrimp dragon. Sure. Um, yes. And that uh, that's something I, I really enjoy. Okay. It'll be something that stays with me for a long time to come. Because you're going to watch him get a shrimp dragon tattoo one of these days. Nope, not even going to entertain that energy. <laughs> okay, Mara? Mara? She... So I guess I'm sure they, they also keep pronouncing her name um, Mara. Yeah, I, I, I just, I have to keep remembering it, Marinara. Mm-hmm. Because that stuck with me. But I guess that's why you introduce yourself like that, is so that people say your name correctly. Yeah. I do the same thing with my last name. That's fair. Uh, she's getting a really... She got a really dirty edit. Yeah. Yeah. She put out, like, a a reel or, like, a TikTok, um, basically, like, kind of commenting a little bit on it. But, um, but yeah, I agree. I, I feel bad for the edit that she's getting right now. It's... Not a pretty one. Sorry, I'm trying to fix your video sync. I am I am paying attention. Um, yeah, they made her into like this very insecure villain. Yeah, it it, it didn't. It felt like it went zero to a hundred real fast. She kind of like fell off a cliff of self confidence, and it, it's just not. It felt dirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not cute. I, yeah. Uh, Rachel, who we kind of discussed already, um, but obviously is going to be a central character here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like looking over my notes right what, now. What, what do you have on, on Rachel here? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm talking about in these notes. Um, I actually had that Clayton is such an anxious mess around her um, that he is looking for like reassurance from her um, slash like is also like feeling more into her in some ways than she's into him. Like it feels more like it. There's just like there, there's a different vibe with them too versus like the like him and other girls. Um, and then I just have fuck Rachel because she got the group rose. That, that's <laughs> fair. Um. My head keeps mixing up Rachel and Susie, which isn't isn't oh. exactly good because it crosses some of my notes. Um, like I had to write out in my notes that Susie was the one that took him up on the rooftop because I just I kept making it Rachel and it, I don't know what's wrong with me. They don't even look the same. No, no, they don't. Okay, uh, I'm going to pop us over to Sarah. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me talk for a minute, because I'm going to try to switch your timing, and I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, so Sarah got the first rose again. Mm -hmm. um, she seems to be pulling those roses fairly consistently at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what they have. We haven't really seen what would be driving getting those those first roses every single time. But I guess at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we think or see. Well, and we've talked about that we don't know how much the order actually aligns with anything, right? Whether it's like producers saying you're going to announce them in this order or whether it's like actually like the bachelor or bachelorette who's choosing the order. So we don't know how, like what value to place on that. Um, at the cocktail party, she grabbed Clayton first. I think I've said it before, but she makes pretty good use of the time she's given. Yeah. Um, yes. One other call out is that we did see footage of her one-on-one -on -one date. Um, in one of the preview packages, it looked like they went, uh, hiking or mountain climbing or something like that. 
Um, but yeah, as you alluded to earlier, not not in the show. Literally says, "What the fuck is this date?" Because <laughs> um, yeah, all of a sudden we jumped from the group date to it's still nighttime, but now we're on a one-on-one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I so there are clearly a lot of issues that I had with the with the way that they handled the one-on-one. Um, Again, it just, like, it felt so much like they are just trying to set up the drama versus, like, that she actually goes far in the competition, right? And that there's, like, a connection there. Like, it very much, the way that they produced all of it and put it together for the episode felt like they wanted to include it and they only wanted to include this section of it where there's drama, right? Like, we didn't even get, like, a good, like, conclusion of their date. Like, we got more of a conclusion on their date with Susie than we did <laughs> with Sarah, um, and so it just, it felt so out of place and so random, um, and didn't make sense at all. Um, we like once again have Clayton making these like absurd accusations, um, in like not a great way. And then walking away or be being very quiet and mute and still when people get upset, um, and then coming back and being like, okay, like now I believe you and everything's fine. Um, and so they're, they're continuing to make him look bad as well. Right. It's like, I guess like what I'm trying to point out here is that like them only showing that half a date and that portion of the half a day just like did everyone dirty. It's weird TV when you have your lead leave the scene frequently uh, from a point standpoint, I appreciated it because Sarah spiraled. Um, yeah. And that's how she got up to 48 points. She had she had a hell of a lot of points in very little time. Um, yeah. But that was a that was a painful one on one to watch. Yeah. It just it it felt like it didn't need to play out anywhere close to the way it did. Um, and then by the end of it, she's decided she's the next villain. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was like nine minutes of just like pure chaos. Um, yeah. What do you have on Serene? Um, well, she got the second rose out. Her ability to eat disgusting food astounded me and also grossed me out um but she definitely deserved to win she also probably deserved to win the group date rose (laughs) rachel when she's Uh, like wringing the fish into her mouth and uh that was was a little much it was so gross yeah, everyone that I was, like, sitting with, we were all, like, gagging. <laughs> it was so bad. Um, I actually, my one friend, um, she actually had to, like, turn around and we had to tell her when it was over because she was going to throw More up. More than fair. <laughs> uh, Susie, who, as you said, stole Clayton away mysteriously uh, without revealing her name uh, for some clock tower kissing. Yeah. Yeah, it was cute. Um, and she did say that she's falling in love yeah. with him. Um, but yeah, I think he really liked it too. Like he was really, really happy to he see He seems her. to appreciate the effort. Whether yeah. it's a small effort or a large effort. He just appreciates like the little gifts and like kind of telling him what to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Teddy, I have one note for. It just says yawn. Um, her dress for the nighttime portion of their date was incredible. It was so good. I have to pull it up. I don't think I recall. Like, I would have taken a bite out of her. Like, delicious. So good. Um, yeah, I mean, otherwise, clearly, like, I don't know that Clayton's ever met a virgin before. 
Um, I, <laughs> um, I also don't know if he's ever met someone who hasn't been loved before. Like the, his follow ups to both of those like things that she said were just again <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, I, it was weird. All right. Uh, you had anything else on these girls before we jump into point categories? No. I just like want to put this episode out of my head. Cause... All right. Uh, what do you have for us on, uh, on the categories this week? Okay. So for kisses, Rachel maintained her first place. Um, she moved up from 15 kisses to 18. Um, we currently have Sarah and Susie sharing 12, and then we have Serena and Teddy sharing 11. Um, and so we're getting up some pretty high numbers, but I mean, you'll notice that those are truly the top five. So everyone who's been eliminated is lower than that, right? So he is keeping people that we're seeing more kisses from. Um, and as a quick aside, um, there's only one woman who's still on the show who has yet to be kissed by Clayton on screen, and that is Mara. Okay. Mara. Mara. Um, everyone oh, else has because Genevieve screen. got hers. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Um, as far as jealousy, anxiety, worry, um, oh boy. Um, so Mara jumped up do you want to guess how many instances of anxiety worry or jealousy she had in this she episode? Was on my team i think it was like six or seven it was Jesus. nine so she went from four before this episode to nine and i think each of those is minus three mm-hmm. so that's 27 points that she would have otherwise had so really having mara in your lineup without all of that, so like if she would have trended the way that she has been, right, gotten the edit that she has been getting up until this point, she would have had uh, like above yeah, 40 they're, points. They're two each. So she lost 18. Okay. 18. So, so she would have had like 30, uh, yeah. above 30 points. And so she, she would have been second highest, right? If she would have filed the same edit. And so really, like if you're going to add this from a standpoint, putting her in your lineup wasn't a mistake because Truly, like, without those anxiety points, she was trending so high and, like, would have gotten those points for both of us. Um, but because of the edit that they gave her, which was very unexpected, she ended up losing half of those points. Isn't yeah, that that's crazy? a lot of points. Yeah. Um, Susie came in with eight, and I think previously she was at five or six, so she had, like, a couple instances of it. And then Genevieve is at seven. Um, again, to bring up the ladies that have been eliminated, um, so Shanae would have been second. She finished with nine total. Um, Lindsay tied with Susie at eight, and then Jill tied with Genevieve at seven. So we got some anxious uh, ladies here. So switching over to drama. Um, so Mara ended up with 16 occurrences of smack talking throughout the season so far. She's in first place now from the girls who are still left. Um, Genevieve's at 10 and then Gabby at eight. So Gabby is definitely like someone who's slowly creeping up there, right? She's getting instances, um, of the smack talking, but also like, isn't really losing points for stuff right now. Um, and so she could potentially be like a solid bet for you. (laughs) As far as the girls that were eliminated, Shanae finished with, do you think over under 30? Jeez. Um, she was on six episodes, more mm-hmm. over 30. Yeah, so she finished with 34 instances of smack oh. talking. Um, Sierra finished, um, and we talked about this last week, but Sierra finished with 17. So Shanae and Sierra were top two for smack talking throughout the whole season um, so far, I guess. And then Elizabeth would have uh, is finished tied with Genevieve right now at 10. Um, for fighting and confronting, we lost both Shanae and Elizabeth, who are our two highest, uh, or our, our front runners in that category. Um, Shanae ended up finishing with eight instances of fighting or confronting. 
Um, so right now we just have Genevieve with two and, and uh, Mara with one. And then all the other girls have zero for that category. Well, so. Yeah, it's been very dominated by uh, a certain someone. Yeah, absolutely. So, and for whatever reason, uh, the producers don't really want us to focus on love this season. Hey, you know, it, it'll be love in the end. Maybe. Or not. All right. Uh, we are having some difficulties. So I'm going to cut the pick show separately. Uh, so <laughs> okay. thank you for joining us on 602 Grow Show. Uh, like and subscribe on our YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, and also go ahead and get yourself signed up for Rose League. It's uh, really easy in an app. Um, so we'll probably drop these videos back to back. But uh, Pix is where the money is. So we're going we're gonna to dial in on that <laughs> real quick. So uh, definitely uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. And we will see you in a couple of minutes. We'll let you watch these back to back.